Man, this Dolphins game is gonna be crazy, man. I just um I don't know what to expect. I'm expecting it to be close. I know I've seen some people on both sides, Dolphins side and Ravens side, who expect the blowout. I just I just don't see it. I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it. But I just I don't know. I don't, I don't see a blowout, man. And then uh Come to find out that Marlon Humphrey, he ain't been practicing, so he probably ain't gonna play. Ronnie Stanley, he probably not gonna play, even though I mean he ain't played in a long time anyway. But um, so it's like, oof, I don't know. It, it could be Marcus Peters' first game back. How will his body be? What type of shape will he be in? Um, so I don't, I don't know what to expect, man. But it's it should be a a, a really good game and a really fun game. And like like y'all already know, this th these games are extra special. Uh, to me, but somebody who's also extra special to me uh, is y'all. Um, and before we get into this video, this episode of questions from y'all, I, I wanted to just do a quick little check in uh, just to see how everybody's doing, how y'all are doing. Um, and you can put it in the comment section, you put if you're doing good, you're doing bad. And if you want to put why, cool. If you don't want to put why, we get it. That's completely fine and, and understandable. Um, but I appreciate y'all. I, I, I appreciate y'all. Um, me, myself, we, we, we're doing pretty good. Um, my wife, son, family's, family's good. Um, told y'all Carter, Carter been, he been in school. Well, we, well, we do the homeschool with him, so he does it from the crib. So, uh, that's, that's been going good. Um, and yeah, he, 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 he does a good job, man. Uh, my wife, she, she covers all the subjects with him, but for me, I cover the math with him. And sometimes I'll hop in a little bit here and there on other stuff. But for me, I do the math because the thing that I love about math is that um, there is no speculation to what the answer is. Math is so straightforward. It's like, all right, this is it. And this this is the only answer. Like with something like language arts, maybe social studies in some cases and other subjects like that. Answers can be sort of, um, is objective the word? I don't know if objective is the word, but the, the, it, it, it could be this, or it could be that, or it might be this, or you can consider it being that, but with math, it's like, no, it's this, and that's it. But I, I love teaching him because my favorite part about being his dad, not only with math, but just things in general, just life in general, is just when he gets it. When he gets it, when stuff clicks, and it's like, boom, there we go. Um, so he's, he's doing really good. My wife, she's, she's doing really good. Um, Things so yeah, family wise, everything is a okay. Uh, work wise, stuff is busy, <laughs> stuff is crazy as, as y'all know. Uh, but the channel it's, it's it's doing all right, it's doing all right. Um, we, this will be the week, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, but this will be the week that we hit uh fifty eight thousand subscribers. So it's a little insane right there. Uh, again, the channel still super super small, but. Uh, is is big enough for me, um, and I uh, I just appreciate everybody that's a part of it. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun. I mean, we always have fun, but like recently we've been having a lot more fun. Um, it's been fun bringing different people on and whatnot. It's been diff it's been fun going to other people's channels and whatnot, working with them. I just uh, this past week I work with my guy Yuri. Uh, I work with my guy uh, Dougly. Do wrong. I know I had Dougly on our, our channel, then had TD on our channel too. Um, I feel like I worked with somebody else recently, too. I know I did. Oh, and I cannot think of who it is off the top of my head right now. Who did I... I just worked with somebody. Oh, Coach. I know I worked with Coach. Um, That was right before the season started. But I think it was somebody else. I don't know. But it's fun. It's fun. Please, if anybody, if you got a channel, uh, and whether it's big or small, it does not matter. If you want to work together, please let me know. Please let me know. Because um, I am more than willing to work with anybody. I don't care if you got two subscribers. I don't care if you got 2,000 subscribers. I don't care if you got 20,000, 200,000, whatever. You want to talk football? Cool. I'm down. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, man, so it's been fun. It's been fun. So th things are fun. Things are going. Uh, things are going all right with the channel. Um, again, y'all just supporting like like crazy. Um, shout out to all the the, the team keep it clean channel members. Uh, uh, appreciate y'all. I think the newest team keep it clean channel member is Big V. 
Uh, so I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, shout out to all the, uh, the, the, the team keep it clean patrons. Newest team keep it clean patron uh, is Dave W. Uh, so Dave, uh, appreciate you. Um, it's just been, it's just a boatload of support, man. It, it's it's a, a boatload of support. I should really say a yacht load of support. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I can't complain over anything. Uh, that's going on right now. I, I got no complaints. Um, so things 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 are pretty good. Uh, very grateful of everything. Um, something to, to always keep in mind and to always be grateful. An another reason to always be grateful for stuff is because things could change like that. Things could change just like that. So whatever opportunities you get in whatever field you're in, and ju just in life in general, be grateful for it because you never know when stuff could change. So. That's that, man. Um, yeah, man. I just—it's been a lot of love, man. I um appreciate y'all. I know it was—it was funny on Twitter the other day. Uh, Kay Adams, I think she works for NFL Network. I think she was like, "Oh, I need a Ravens media person to um to uh to to break down this Ravens Dolphins game." I don't know if she ever picked anybody. I don't know if she was just talking. I don't know, if she, but I there was a lot of different people making different suggestions and whatnot off of who she should pick. But I, I gotta see if she picked anybody. I don't think she did. But anyway. Um, but yeah, man, I, uh, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate y'all because I know, th and, and this is on me too. Um, so this is my apologies too, because a lot of stuff can get lost in translation when it comes to text or comments. Like there was somebody uh, in a video that we put out yesterday, um, with my guy, Dougley, uh, for the preview in the Dolphins game. And the title of the video was could, could the Dolphins pull the, the, the upset? And one of my guys commented, he was like, man, he's like, well, why would it be an upset? And look what they did to us last week. He said, shaking my head. Then I replied to him, I said, did you not see the, the quotation marks around the word upset? And I put shaking my head. And then he was like, oh, no, 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 my, my bad. I didn't, I didn't mean to sound like I was like hyped or nothing. And I, and I told him, no, I said, no, that's my fault. That, no, no worries, man. You ain't got to apologize. So it, it can be so easy to... um. To mistranslate what somebody means or how they're saying it through text because you don't know how they're saying it. They could be typing one thing and you could be reading it. I could be reading it like, what? They, why are they being so slick? So it's, it's, it's tough for me not to get slick back. It's very tough. It's very tough. And again, we all imperfect. I am definitely one of the most imperfect of the imperfects. So it's tough. It's tough. But work in progress, man. Work in progress, but I, I appreciated uh, his understanding. I always appreciate people's understanding because uh, one thing that we all got to understand is that we all going through it. We all going through it. Everybody is in some way. Um, so, yeah, man, I just wanted to um, just talk about that side stuff before we get into it. Cause I know, we, again, we, we, we talk all this Raven stuff all the time and talk all this football stuff all the time, but it's important to, uh, to just talk life, too. Because, I mean, that's, that's, that's what we do. We live. So we got to talk about life, too. It can't just be football. But anyway, um, let's get into the first question. Love, love y'all. For real, man. Appreciate y'all. Uh, first question came from um, DeAndre. Uh, DeAndre said, and appreciate you being a patron. So that ain't Graven. How you doing? Hope everything is going well. Everything pretty good. I appreciate you asking. and Because that's like. I know that question for a lot of people, it can be like second age. Oh, how you doing? How's it going? But a lot of people can ask that question and not even really like care for what your answer is. They could just be asking to ask because it's the beginning of a, uh, a conversation. But I always appreciate that question um, because, hey, somebody may just need that. Somebody may need that so they can let it out. But, hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going good. Everything cool. That's one thing. But somebody, you can ask, hey, somebody, ask somebody, how's it going? It's been rough. Stuff is tough. I've been struggling with this. I've been struggling with X, Y, Z. So they may need that to, to let it out. And you could help somebody in a big way. So when, when y'all ask somebody how they doing, uh, allow them to give you a genuine response. Allow them to, to let you know how they doing. Especially if they're not doing so good. Because you could be helping them out. Uh, but anyway... Uh, his question said, in your opinion, what is one thing you want to see from the Ravens this week outside of being more diverse on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, I would like to see continue tackling, tackling well. Um, it's so important, especially in this game, because you got uh, the Dolphins and they got their speedsters at the wide receiver position and their tight end, too, with Mike Gesicki. 
um, or Jasicki. I always forget the Jasicki, Jasecki, Jasicki, whatever. Mike G. I'm gonna call him that. Uh, but they got a lot of speed. They got a lot of speed on that offense. So if you don't tackle somebody, then again, a two yard gain, it could turn into an eight yard, a ten yard, a fifteen yard gain. So tackling is important. Um, and just really, I, I just really want to see not even necessarily the diversity on offense. Of course, I want to see that all the time, but just. To to shut up this whole, I just I just want this whole cover zero talk to go away. I mean I'm I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing about it, man. And I know Dolphins like again they didn't they showed cover zero, but they didn't even run cover zero half the time. Um, but I I mean it it was excellent what they did last year. It was phenomenal. They shut Ravens offense down, and you know they're gonna try to do a lot of same stuff. But I would just really like to see that be shut up. So we can just move on and move forward. Um, I think Dolphins are going to do well this year. They got a tough division. Obviously, the Bills. I think the Bills are going to be running the show over there in the uh, AFC East. Um, but then you got Dolphins, Patriots, and Jets. I think Jets are going to be last place. Uh, but then the Dolphins and the Patriots. Um, I think Dolphins will be second place in the AFC East. I think they'll get, they'll get second place. They, they've done a good job of putting together the team, and now it's just it's on them to make it happen, especially on their offense. Um, big year for Tua. A uh, huge year for him. Um, but I, I would like to also see pressure. Not just pressure, but also sex. Um, what's crazy, what's crazy is that uh, Travis Jones. Hey, I got to give some credit to John Harbaugh. I got to give credit to John Harbaugh. I, I got to. Um, reason I got to give big credit to John Harbaugh is because with these injuries, this offseason, um... I mean, minus yesterday. Because yesterday he had a presser and was like, oh, well, the injury report, it'll tell you everything you need to know. So he's a little, little snarky. But I, I say, hey, it's John Harbaugh. So, hey, you you know how he is. Um, but with, uh, <laughs> with the injuries to guys this year, like, they've been, like, he's been – Giving us accurate information. Like with Tyler Linderbaum. They're like, oh, he's going to be out one or two weeks. I was thinking, mm, what? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, Hobbs. We heard this before. He was out for two weeks. Came back. With, um, uh, who was it? Uh, oh, with, um, Travis Jones. He's, he's out, uh, what they say, four to five weeks, I think. But now he's back practicing already after two weeks, or has it been three weeks? But if he plays tomorrow, cool. If he doesn't play tomorrow, cool. But um, just the fact that he's back practicing again, and it's like, whoa, he's back already? Because I, I didn't expect him so soon. I didn't expect him so soon. Um, and I know there's been more. Um, but it's just been nice that Harbaugh's been, he's, he's done let us know some stuff. And it's been, like, accurate. Like, it's, it's like, oh, okay. Because I'm just... I'm not used to it. I'm used to the games when it comes to injury. And I understand why he plays the games, but I'm just used to the game. So the fact that for some of these guys, he said something, and, and it's actually come to fruition. It's actually happening. It's like, oh, okay. Well, let's go. But, yeah, man, I, I, back to what I want to see from this week. Uh, yeah, the, just pressure and sex. P productive pressure. Meaning, yeah, they, they messing two up, throwing his timing off and all that. But they bringing them down too. Next question came from the newest patron, my guy Dave. He said, "Ain't Graven been wanting to ask this question and get your take on it. Do you think how Hamilton needs to bulk up, or is he just fine? Because I've seen him miss on Garrett Wilson, on Malik Willis, or did those guys just have stronger will to get away than than Kyle's will to tackle? We'd we'll love to hear your take. Thanks. Hey, but y'all gonna get off Kyle Hamilton, man. Um, Malik, like those are two very very shifty guys." Like, very, very shifty guys. Um, guys that will, if you one-on-one, -on -one, they will make you miss. I anybody could have a tough time tackling either one of those two. Uh, Malik Willis, and again, with him, it's tricky because Malik Willis, he's a quarterback. So with a quarterback, you, you know you can't even look at them the wrong way. And I know he was running out in the open field. He's running, uh, well, he's running down the sideline. But he's shifty. He's a shifty quarterback, man. So you can't, like, you'll be wanting to whack him, but then it'll be preseason, so you think, oh, man, I ain't trying to hurt him, and I don't want to But I wonder if he was overthinking. I wonder if that's been it. Now, now with Garrett Wilson, you ain't even got to overthink. He'll shake you, like, like we saw. Um, let's give it time. Let's give it time. I don't even think it's a, it's a matter of him needing to bulk up. I just think it's a, a matter of him just getting more and more comfortable. You get more and more comfortable, the confidence starts to build up, and you'll play a lot better. So 
again, it's been one well, it's been one regular season game. We saw a couple missed tackles in the preseason too. But let's let's give it some more time. Let, let's see if this ends up being a pattern or it's just a couple of little one-offs. Next question came from my guy Martin, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, <laughs> my goodness. He said, man, we better not see Greg Roman call a draw play on third and 17 in the fourth quarter when it's a one-score game again like last year. Uh, I mean, everything just depends on situation, um, depends on timing. We just want uh, the situational play calling just to be better. And, of course, execution to just be better, just all around. We just want the Ravens to be better. Uh, with no, nobody and we, sh we shouldn't and nobody should expect them to be this perfect team where every single play works, every single formation works, everything that they do absolutely works. We would love that. But that's just not how it goes. It's going to be hiccups. It's going to be mess-ups. Greg Roman's going to have stuff that he messes up on. Harbaugh's going to have stuff that he messes up on. Lamar's going to have stuff that he messes up on. The receivers, offensive line, running backs, tight ends, everybody going to have stuff that they mess up on. But it's a matter of cleaning up those mess-ups so they don't end up being chaos. Next question came from my boy David P. He said, I ain't graving the team. Keep it clean, fam. Been a minute since I submitted something. Do you think the reason a lot of Ravens fans are against the signing of Lamar to a fully guaranteed contract is how it may affect the team and roster going forward? I think that's what a lot of people have thought. They, they've been thinking that, oh, if the Ravens give Lamar Jackson a fully guaranteed contract, then they're, they're not going to be able to do anything else. And that's just false. It's false. But anyway, he said, I was one that was against that type of deal as we all saw how Joe Flacco's deal impacted us after the Super Bowl. But how did it impact him after the Super Bowl? Because they signed him in the deal, like the deal was fine the first three years. And they, the plan was always for them to revisit it after the first three years and then rework it. And they did that. But the plan was for, they didn't have to get rid of Anquan Bolden. They chose to do that. This terrible decision, but they didn't have to. With Ed Reed, like and somebody in the comment section brought these reminders up to me. I was like, oof. But with Ed Reed, too. Ed Reed wanted to stay. But Harbaugh's like, you, your things, get out of here, buddy. But, yeah, he, <laughs> he said, you, you out of here, man. Um, So it's like they, they did some stuff, and it just, they, they, they got rid of some people. And they didn't have to get rid of them. They could have kept them. But they, they chose to get rid of them, and they chose to make some questionable moves. They signed a lot of people throughout that, that time, too, uh, especially on defense. They, they signed a lot of people on defense. But, um, it, like, the, the, contract, con the contract ain't going to stop nothing. It ain't going to stop nothing. It could possibly change the way some stuff is done, but it, the, the guaranteed contract does not have to stop anything. Oh, but anyway. He still got some more question left. He said, everything comes with risk, and I get how it can scare everyone, much like Stanley being away for basically two years. Oof. Now, that one, that's, that's a whole nother story right there. Oof. He said, but the more I look at him, the more I'm okay with it. I strongly feel that Lamar's influence and presence reaches far beyond the football field. I've been a huge fan of Lamar since his days in college and have everything from Lamar memorabilia to him winning me a nice chunk of change <laughs> with winning an MVP in 2019. Definitely bet on him to win it again. We don't encourage betting on this channel, though. I'm just reading what he said. Uh, but to think he's at his peak seems foolish, and he's proven his entire athletic career to never doubt him. Uh, I believe when it's all said and done, uh, he'll be a Baltimore legend with the statue at the bank, and even after football, his impact in the community will continue. I think my mind changed once I read his children's book to my daughter and her saying how much she loved it. Oh, that's special right there. Uh, he said, when you pay someone to be the face of your franchise, it really is more than football. Otherwise, you wouldn't see all the community events the team creates for players to take part of. Anyway, take care and hope we're here talking about a big home opening win next week. Much love and take care, everyone. That was such like a, a beautiful letter. It, it was so nicely worded and, and well put. He brought out some great examples. Of how, again, with Lamar, he just obviously wouldn't just be the quarterback of the Ravens if they got to sign him to a long-term deal, uh, but would be the face. Of, I mean, he currently is the face of their franchise, but uh, he would be a face in the community and all that stuff as well, too. So, yeah, man, you, you, you made some great points. And the last question on this episode, a question from Subs, and this will probably be the last time I see y'all before the game tomorrow. Um, so that should be fun. Looking forward to it. It came from my boy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, hope all is well with you and yours as always. Appreciate that. Uh, remember when I said a month or two back that by the end of the season, the Ravens wide receiver room will be top 10. 
Yeah, I know, hot take, but I know it's just week one, but what I've seen from them is something nobody has seen. But they will hate it and talk down on it. Okay, let's see what he's talking about. Something I noticed was Duvernay. Uh, he is what Hollywood was. Uh, not in the sense of the role he plays because, you know, he's a jet sleep king, LOL. But the fact that he makes play, oh, he plays backyard football, which is another term they made to down Lamar. A.K.A. a wide receiver adjusting to reading and reacting to the quarterback as the play breaks down. Uh, which all the other elite quarterbacks do, and they do nothing but praise them any, anywhere. Um, he said, that's big to me because guess who else plays that way? Mandrews. Guess who else? Robinson. Guess who else? Bateman. I think we will see the craziest plays out of them this season for that reason because that's something you can't teach. Just like how Likely knows defense as well because of his IQ and sits and holds within them, what do you think? Hey, that, that could make, um, in my opinion, that can make a good offense a great one. If they can sort of, uh, they can get off script. They don't just got to stick to the script. If they can get off a little bit here and there. Um, that could go a long way. Because like, that's, that's what I always say. That's why his connection with, with Mark Andrews and Hollywood was so strong. Because they do that. They do that on a regular basis. Something ain't working, something breaks down. They're not just going to sit there. They're going to move. They're they going to get a feel for what Lamar's trying to do. And they're going to they gonna try to help him out. So I always went to those guys. So anyway, uh, he said, also, I love our fans more than uh, I love our fans, more the OG fans than the bandwagon fans. But I accept all of them. But our fan base has gotten a little toxic. So I hope they chill on likely. Uh, they act like it wasn't raining outside. He's a rookie. He will be OK. Calm down, guys. LOL. And I mean, I, I yeah, I, I know a lot of people were tripping on likely. Um, but I know uh like, it's, it's the first game of the season, so a lot of people are extra hype, extra excited. It's a lot of emotions going and whatnot, not just from the players, but from the fans. Um, so a lot of people can sort of overreact to things, which, which I, I get it. Um, but that's why we, we keep, kept saying, like, it's week one. And let's not overreact or underreact. Well, let, let's, just, let's just see how things trend, how things continue, see if patterns are established. Let's just see. So, yeah, it was not a big deal. He said, on another note... You know I wasn't a big fan of moving on from wing, but you know something I was thinking about that baffles me to this day about the Dolphins game last year? As much cover zero that wink throws at people and bluff blitzes and things of that nature, the staff as a whole failed us that game because if that's how wink calls games also, why weren't we ready for it? To that day, that still has me baffled. Yeah, yeah. That, a lot, that, that, that like messed with a lot of people's minds because it's like, yeah. Wink, it, the, if you look up the definition of blitz, the definition of blitz it. Look it up in the dictionary. The definition is Wink Martindale. It's Wink Martindale. Seriously, look, look it up in your dictionary. Pull it up on Google. The definition of blitz is Wink Martindale. So the fact that the Ravens, when they got so thrown off from it, it was like, whoa. But may, maybe the, it's the way that the Dolphins were doing it. Maybe they got the best disguises in the league last year. I don't know what happened, but it worked for them. He says, so once we get past AFC East, the season should be a breeze. It's strange. We literally play them all back to back. Yeah, we sure do. Uh, but say we make it out of there 4-0. What do you see our record being at the end of the season? Um, that would be nice. That would be tough. Right now, do I see them being 4-0 out of the East? Right now, I don't. But, again, it's just been one game. I only seen these Ravens. We only seen these Ravens for one game, and that's it. We have not seen them any more games. So, based off of the one game that we saw them for, and it was rainy conditions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get that. Right now, I would say no, but let's see how they are this week. Let's see how they are the next week. The biggest game that I'm concerned about at the, out of the AFC East uh, is the Bills. But definitely, this Dolphins one, too. Definitely. The two games I'm most concerned about is Dolphins and Bills. Uh, and, I mean, Patriots, they're going to bring their problems, too. But let's just see how these Ravens are these next couple of weeks. But if they go 4-0, I mean, yeah, that'd be great. What would I see their record being? If they can come out undefeated in these first four games, because I've been, I've been saying 12 and 5. If they can come out undefeated these first four games, I think they would actually have a chance to be like. Like 13 and 4. I mean, this 12 and 5 could still happen, but. If because because Bills they I mean again Dolphins gonna be tough Bills gonna be tough I mean every team is really tough 
that I could see 13 and 4. Mm. Still a tough schedule, though. But I, I could see 13 and 4. Um, I know one of my guys, <laughs> he told me last night, uh, he was like, he, he, my guy Michael, Michael G. He said that uh, if the Ravens, um, he said that if, if the weather's not a factor and the Ravens stay healthy, he said he sees them going undefeated. I laughed at it, but because I don't see that. I mean, it'd be nice. I wouldn't be complaining. But I just, I just don't see them having this perfect season. Because um, hiccups happen. Mistakes happen. Accidents happen. And I mean, sometimes the other team is just better than you, too. It happens. Sometimes the other team just show up more than you did that game. It happens. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, he said, and like how Mike Davis is. A, <laughs> I'm done with you, man. <laughs> he said, and like how Mike Davis is about to be real soon. Because big homie Hobbs don't play that. I'm out. Yeah.